Hey guys, me, Ronald Chris Tomer here on this Saturday, the very first day of November, and look what we've got. This is the storm track that's favoring the Pacific Northwest and a lot of British Columbia. This is Whistler Blackcomb. It's coming down. Rain snow lines generally around 4,000. At times, it might be a little bit higher, and it will slowly kind of drop over the next 24 hours, but it is definitely coming down up there at uh, Whistler Blackcomb. There's... Uh, Rendezvous Lodge Cam, you can see the snow coming down. There's Whistler Peak. And let's go down here to the Glacier Express. I mean, it is, it's coming down. I mean, this is really just the start of what's going to be a juicy pattern uh, for a lot of the Pacific Northwest and BC. Here's radar out of uh, the Pacific Northwest. I mean, you can see the trajectory right up into Washington State, Northern uh, Oregon, and focusing right on that coastal range. And at times, it is overrunning into interior BC. And I've got some decent snow for interior BC as well in my forecast. A little piece of this obviously broke off, is running through uh, parts of Montana and brushing parts of Wyoming. This is not uh, heavy precip at all. It's a, it's a very light little wave that kind of broke off from everything else. Um, let's go to water vapor satellite imagery here. So on this, your drier air, and this is up in the mid-levels of the atmosphere, blacks, oranges, and reds. That's your drier air when you see that. When you see these whites and these blues, that's definitely moisture in the middle of the atmosphere. So here's the flow. Everything's being directed up here into the, uh, the Pacific Northwest, BC. And then again, there's some overrun uh, off into uh, parts of the northern tier. You can see the big area of low pressure. Everything's sort of spinning around that area of low pressure. Um, and then what we're seeing down here, this is all sort of like a high pressure ridge sitting across the West Coast. So everything is going up and over that right now. My bullet points, here's what I'm looking at. So storm track, we talked about this, favoring the Pacific Northwest, BC, Northern Tier. Rain snow lines at about 4,000 at times. It's a little bit above, but like I said, over the next 24 hours, it will gradually fall. 4,000 feet. We've got this big dry lull in place through probably 11.5 for a lot of California, absolutely Colorado, Utah, and parts of Wyoming. Now, California will get the change first um, because there's a storm system and a very powerful jet that will plow right in to Tahoe and the Sierra uh, with some precip, and I'll show you that coming up. Now, overall, when you look at the Pacific Northwest BC and what's going on, we've got three surges of atmospheric river moisture. 11.12, that's what we're seeing happen right now. 11.567, and then a third one, 11.910, somewhere right in there. I'll show you the intensity forecast for that coming up. There are your best odds of snow for Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and interior BC. So interior BC, you've got it today, tomorrow. Uh, a second shot, 11.5, 11.8 through 11.8. And then a third shot, 11.9. And it's an extended period of heavy precip through the 15th. Um, so what about Colorado? Well, it is a long, long waiting game. I mean, it's high and dry and probably nothing significant until 11.10 and 11.11, believe it or not. All right, let's talk about the uh, the forecast for precipitation. Here's the forecast radar. We'll start this up at lunchtime today. And where do we got it? It's what we pointed out. It's all up here, Pacific Northwest, BC, northern tier of states. All right, let's move ahead. So here we are, dinner hour. Some of that precip does sneak down into central to northern Idaho, northwest, western Montana. A little bit of it. All right, here we are. This is, I don't know, 7, 8, 9 o'clock in the morning on Sunday. A little bit of that's brushing the Tetons, the Wind Rivers, Yellowstone. A little bit back here, central to northern Idaho. But it's fizzling because look at that. Psh, completely dries up. So here we are on Sunday, late Sunday. All right, moving into Monday morning. So here we are at probably 5 o'clock in the morning on Monday. Let's move to lunch hour. Here's probably lunch on Monday. What we're starting to see here. So this is 
you know, we're kind of working our way through the early morning hours towards lunch on uh, Monday, November 3rd. A little bit of precip up in the northern tier. A little bit working its way into northern California. All right, here we are. Um, let's move into Tuesday. So here we are early, early on Tuesday. This is the 4th right here of November. And what we've got is some precip, and this is some of this is out ahead of a storm system coming in late four into five, early six. And you're starting to see a little bit of a return flow. This is the same precip that will likely work its way south towards Tahoe and the rest of the Sierra into the fifth. But you're seeing some blow off precip into the interior here, into parts of Idaho, Wyoming, and a little bit of Montana as well. So interesting to see that. That's this is nothing major at this point, but it's some light snow accumulations at that point. All right, let's talk a little bit about the atmospheric uh, pressure anomaly. So you're looking for highs or lows right here. So this is effective today, 11-1, first day of November. Big low moving through uh, the heartland. Big area of high pressure here across the inner mountain. No surprise with all the action up here into the Pacific Northwest and B.C. All right, here's 11.5. So this is the storm system. You can see the digging in into California, the Pacific Northwest. There's our area of low pressure. It's running into this high. And when I showed you that forecast radar, what's happening is that precip's getting pushed into Idaho and Wyoming, but it's running into that high. So it's it's having a hard time staying uh, staying solid. It's, it's just running into that high. Here's what the jet stream would look like on that day. This is 11.5. So this is a powerful jet stream digging into California, escorting that energy and that moisture in with that area of low pressure, which would be sitting right there. And it's trying to push it. You can see the streamlines. It's pushing it into a lot of Idaho and Wyoming. But it's running into that area of high pressure. Uh, okay, let's go to a comparison. This is the very day after that. This is 11.7 on Friday. So some of that energy will then move into the interior Rockies. And there's a little bit of a discrepancy here. So the operational, you can see where the forecast pressure drops are right up here. And if this happens on the operational, then we're going to see snow in northern Utah and parts of northern Colorado. But on the AI, it doesn't do that. Uh, it's a much weaker low and it's further to the north. So that's a pretty significant difference on Friday 11.7. On if the AI is right, AI is right, then it pushes a lot of that snow northern further to the north into Montana, the Pacific Northwest, BC, Alberta. So it's just a shift. It's a shift from south to north in those models. Looking at the uh, intensity forecast for the integrated vapor transport uh, transport for the Pacific Northwest. So this is what we're looking at to spot the atmospheric river. There's our current surge happening as we speak. And then you've got a couple of additional surges. Maybe we'll just sort of combine those into one between five, six, and seven. And then there's a third surge potentially here. All these are moderate intensity surges, nine, 10, early 11. So it stays active. The flow stays active into the Pacific Northwest. Here's the total precipitation forecast over time. So this is at least a 10-day forecast. So let's watch it at the beginning again. All right, so the axis right there. Everything's kind of north of that for about a five-day period. And then it starts to dig to the south into California and in the parts of uh, Idaho, Wyoming. But there's not a lot of precip here for Utah or Colorado. There really isn't a lot. But, man, there's a lot up here. Those purples that break out, I mean, that's 5, 10, 12 inches or more of total precipitation as if everything fell as rain. This is snowfall. Um, now, over the first five-day period, there's your axis with most of the snow north of that line. You can see it. Then, by the 5th of November, right there, it starts to uh, dig to the south. You get some jet stream support and some snow over the high Sierra. And a little bit of snow in Utah and barely anything in Colorado. I mean, 
maybe an inch over some of those high peaks. That's a 10 to 1 ratio. Look at these, look at that snow up there in the northern Cascades and the coastal range. That's feet. That's four feet of snow, potentially. Let me look at it again. Five feet, in fact. Five feet on some of the very highest peaks. All right, let's look at the northeast. We looked at this yesterday. And you can see it. It comes in little waves up there in the northeast. It's not as much as yesterday, but one, two, three, and maybe three, four waves. It's not as impressive as yesterday, but still looking at several inches over some of the highest peaks in the Northeast. In fact, let's drill down on that. Here's my snow forecast for select locations. Alta, the numbers have all gone down versus yesterday. Only an inch, one wave, inch, second wave, one to three, third wave. Snow mass, nothing until 10-11. Jackson Hole, light at first, and then a nice 6 to 10 inch wave, 11, 6, 11, 7, 3 to 6, and then another 3 to 6er. So things are looking up there in Jackson Hole. Now that's up at the ski area. Uh, Payette National Forest, Central Idaho, you can see the numbers. Pretty big third wave. Baker's looking big. 60, I went with 60 between 11, 9, 11, 13. Uh, like I was saying, man, we could see five feet up there on some of these. And that's higher up on Baker. That's not the base. That's that's mid-mountain and higher. Fitzsimmons Ridge, BC, looking big, especially with that third wave. Uh, I went with Begbie. I added Mount Begbie up there in interior BC, one of the icons up there uh, near Revelstoke. So uh, you've got a nice wave happening right now. These are all, this is a higher elevation forecast, obviously. A couple of lighter waves and then a big 20 there on 11, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And it could be more than that. We'll have to wait and see. That's a pretty moist flow. There's Mount Hood, Mount Washington. So we just look at the northeast. The numbers have gone down, but three on 11, three late. Another one there, five, and then one, and then two. So I, numbers aren't big up there in the northeast, but at least we've got three or four different chances of snowfall. All right, let me show you some of the plumes. So we just talked about Mount Washington. Here's the plume on Washington. So very light to start. And then by the end, you can see we've got three or four little waves that bring us to about 7.4 inches on the ensemble mean. And that's by November 16. Some of the air bars are up around a foot. Um, let's go with uh, J Peak. J Peak, Vermont. So this takes us up in a very, the northern reaches of uh, Vermont. And this squeezes out about four or five inches of snow there by November 16th. And it's pretty slow to start, and then things start to move up, but very slowly. And some of that on J Peak, you know, it's going to be elevation dependent. Let's go to Jackson. We talked a little bit about Jackson. The numbers have crept up, looking at maybe 11 inches there by November 16th. The biggest jumps come 6, 7 and then towards the end of the period. Now the error bars here on the extreme are up around 16, 18 inches. Our final look is at uh, Berthoud Pass. <laughs> it's just, guys, it is slim pickings. Dry, high and dry here through probably five, six. I mean, the numbers are just not that big. Even three or four inches grand total, 10 or 15 days out, it's just nothing. So it, unfortunately, you know, we've got, I think three resorts now open with Keystone, A Basin, well, maybe Loveland. I haven't checked on it. I know they were trying to open by today, but it's just not looking good. You'll be able to make snow, but it's a waiting game for a lot of the uh, the peaks in Colorado. So, guys, that's going to do it. We talked about a lot in this update. I appreciate you tuning in here on the 1st of November. Uh, take care and have a wonderful day.